Okay, we've got this TVR400HC Chimera in today, just giving it a quick health check, so a compression test across all eight cylinders. This customer is quite local to us, he's doing a bit of a rolling restoration, the body's been off and the chassis has had a refurbishment done to it. The paintwork has been back to fiberglass and the full respray, looks absolutely lovely. He's already installed the MagnaCore plug leads himself, um, the exhaust headers are, are wrapped, you probably can't see that down there too well but they are. And it brought it into us today for this little health check and to have the Tornado ECU chip installed and our RPI power amplifier. So uh, we'll show you how we install those and then the car driving at the end. So with the TVRs, the ECU is located in the passenger footwell. It's going to be a little bit difficult to show us actually taking this out because there's not going to be enough room for two of us, but it's down there. Okay, so we're going to try and show you this uh, removal of the ECU. We've got a little bit of light in here, so if you want to pull that flap down, Steve. The ECU, lo you, uh, ECU is located to the left of the battery there. You just slide it out. The ignition's off, so it's safe to unplug. And there we are, 14 CUX, hot wire ECU, which we'll take into the office and show you us chipping. Okay, we've done videos of chipping an ECU before on our YouTube channel. It's several years back now, so we thought we'd show you the process. The screws are just T20 bits, There's just four of them on the 14 CUX. Then removed, we can pop the ECU open. And this is the ECU chip we're going to be changing. And then here you can see the small square chip with the MVA number on, which we reference to uh, to know the software type for the ECU chip. So I'll zoom in on this and uh, I'll show you how we, we change the chip. Okay, so sometimes these chips have a plastic cover over them. Uh, this one doesn't though, so we haven't got to worry about that. To remove the chip, we want to remove it nice and squarely. Um, I have got an ankle earth strap on. I didn't want one on my wrists because it'll just get in the way up in of the video. So uh, what we do is we just put a screwdriver in between the chip and the socket, just rotate it very slightly, and then turn around to the other end and do the same again, and again, and then we should nearly be there. And the chips out. So you can get chip pullers or removing tools, but obviously DIY people often haven't got them and don't want the expense of buying them. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with removing the ECU chip this way, as long as you're careful. The new ECU chip comes as a twin assembly, so we've got the ECU chip on top here. All the information is encoded, so it needs to run through this decoder board first. There's a small half moon cutout on the socket at this end. That denotes that pin one is at this end of the socket. And you can see that half moon cut out on the ECU chip here as well. Now the decoder board doesn't have that, that's why we paint the corner uh, where pin 1 is with this red paint. So place the chip in position, don't push it down yet though. And just double check that all the pins are lined up and then push it down nice and squarely. And that's one ECU chipped. We'll pop the lid back on and put it back in the car. Okay, so here we have uh, the ECU ready to go back in the TVR, the uh, tornado sticker there. So Steve, if you want to slide that back into position. It's important when putting the ECU back in and obviously removing it as well, to make sure the body of the ECU doesn't short out on the positive battery terminal. Um, it's very difficult to see, it's very dark down there. But First step of mounting the amplifier, of course, is cut the leads to length and then solder the terminals on. Lots of people crimp these on, but it's always best to solder as well. I had several uh, customers say they don't work, and it's because they haven't actually made a proper connection. So Steve, if you want to grab your soldering iron. What the hell's that, man? Well, I ain't got an extension lead. Have you got one? Ah, yeah. I can sort that for you. Just stand to one side for a second. Wow. It's gas-powered as well, Steve. Oh right, yeah, that'll do. Okay, so our V8 Bentley powered generator is going to power a soldering iron this time. Still not that exciting. Not certainly not as exciting as a CNC machine, but. LPG tank. 
servos now working and controlling the RPM. Coming across to the generator. Is it working, Steve? I believe it is. Just a little bit of RPI fun. Right, we've got the amplifier installed. We've made a nice little bracket here, uh, mounting to the coil bracket up here and the previously made bracket for the fuel pressure regulator. Amplifier is really easy to wire in. First thing to do is remove the original amplifier, which on this TVR was mounted just on the coil bracket here. And uh, three wires on the amplifier, simple earth, coil negative and coil positive. And then the fly lead here, which is shielded, just goes down to the distributor plug and is fitted as per the instructions that we send out with the amplifiers. So uh, new coil installed as well. And uh, now we'll go out for a road test. OK, so we're out in the Chimera after the chipping and amplifier has been installed. We're just going to show you a little video uh, similar to what we did in the 5 litre. Uh, rather than pulling first all the way to fifth though, we're just going to go first to fifth. So Steve, if you want to pull away in first gear. We'll get to about 15 miles an hour. Zoom in on the speedo there. And then grab fifth. And again, everything's nice and smooth. We're accelerating. And away we go. <laughs> well, hopefully, this has been in focus.